Have you always wondered if there's money to be made in live streaming? On this episode of Dealcasters, we talk with Ross Brand about the roadmap to live stream monetization. The live streaming legend Ross Brand has made the transition from radio broadcaster to a leader in the live streaming industry. Ross started live streaming in the early days of Blab and has stayed on top of the continuing changes in the industry. He also tells you how anyone who puts forth the effort can make money on their live streaming show. So get out your notebook and prepare to get some money-making tips. What's up, Ross? Wow, that's that's some introduction. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, I, I was thinking while I was while I was listening to you that you know that video that I had put out about Amazon Live and all. I probably should have watched it myself and been more <laughs> active. But it's a it's no, it's really wonderful what you guys have done with on this platform. You've been pioneers and you've really created a show out of it and made an art form out of going live on Amazon. Anybody can go on and say, you know, hey, you want a mouse? Here's a mouse. Here you want a <laughs> glass of water? Right. Okay, I'll say. But to go on and entertain people and and inform them about different areas and different products and actually talk to the people who create those products. It's really, really wonderful what you guys have done. And you've really carved out a space for yourself as as leaders in the live streaming community through your work here on Amazon. So I'm really excited to be here and nothing was going to get in my way today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ross. Yeah, just just know that your your thumbprint is on whatever we do here. Yeah, and I mean, I think yeah, lots of times we do we we churn out content, and you know, you just kind of throw it over the fence and hope sometimes somewhere it makes an impact on someone because there's so much that that we all do, whether it's live or or like this video I think was recorded that uh, that we had seen, and you just never know. Sometimes it takes years to hear something back, but. I always feel like it's important to let that person know that they did that because, you know, as a, as a live streamer, as a podcaster, you know, sometimes that little thank you or that little, hey, this, this touched me, this, this made an impact on me, this allowed me to do this. It, it sometimes means the world to people. Well, you know, it, it, it just really means a lot just watching that you were able to take the video and, and go with it. And then everything you've done from that point on has been your own initiative and your own consistency. And just, I think for Jim, I, I would probably say from doing the, the Tim and Jim show for so long, you, you got your, you, you got your reps in now right. and now it's like, okay, a new opportunity came along. Now I can take everything I learned and, you know, you start here and you go to here. Now this time you come right in at a at another level, and you guys have have just taken off here. And it's also a less crowded in many ways because on Facebook Live and YouTube Live, lots of shows, lots of interviews. But to bring that skill set over to Amazon Live, where a lot of people were just doing their product rundown, let's flip through the carousel. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. People got to learn how to sell and they got to learn how to communicate about products because that's probably how we're going to be doing business. But bringing over the show concept here, it's really just been amazing to watch. So I, again, congratulations on everything you've done. You guys have, have really set the, the pace for other people to look to and say, you know, this is what's possible on Amazon Live you can bring over high quality content and high quality conversations and interviews and and still sell and move products and make some money at the same time you've got some really cool features here with the carousel and there's there's products there um you see something you like possible i recommended it go ahead right these guys deserve <laughs> these guys deserve the commission Go, go keep selling, Ross. Keep selling. Yeah. Go, go. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, Ross, it, 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 I tell you what's fun, right? Like we, like we're having this interview with you and and the folks that are watching, you know, because part of it, like Chris and I have talked about since the beginning, was we wanted to be different and we want to teach people. And so, even as an example, we're here talking about how to, you, you know, we're going to be listening to you about how you can monetize your live stream, right? Because for a lot of people. You know, it is. It it takes those reps. It takes that that journey. It's not going to happen 
overnight. Maybe for some people, right? If they they had a built-in audience somewhere else. But I think, you know, on the flip side, you, you know, like Chris and I had a blast the other night because it was just the two of us. And so we we can kind of play with formats. So we were, you know, I had an Oculus Quest on my head and we were live streaming it to a Facebook group and then bringing that live stream in through StreamYard into the presentation. And so people are watching me do a three, you know, do the whole 360 virtual reality thing. And, you know, three years ago when I started live streaming, I would have never imagined that I would be doing something like that on Amazon. And uh, so, you know, we all have these opportunities to learn. I mean, you're always diving into to new stuff, better stuff. You know, we we're talking about, uh, you know, you've got the, the Mac Mini now and that maybe is going to let you do some things you couldn't do before as technology advances. And, uh, you know, and so we've got these people that are watching. We have some of our, uh, our regular, uh, you know, not only viewers, but fellow creators like Phil Hill and Dan Jordan watching. And they, and we learn from each other, right? We see what people are doing. Phil Hill, I don't know, uh, Ross, if you knew this, he may be the first guy to live stream to Amazon while riding a Harley. Oh, wow. So, you know, people are getting really, really creative with, uh, with these things. And, uh, you know, this whole like, you know, this whole live shopping thing is it's in the, in the U S right. It's already big over in, in, uh, Asia is I think we're just scratching the surface. And so, you know, live streamers, you know, deserve to, you know, earn a living, especially if they're doing this as much as some people are doing. And I think that's where I think this new program that you've created, this new vision you have is, uh, is very timely. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a topic that's often uncomfortable. It's easier to have an event or a show and say, this is about community and it's about creativity. And of course it is. And then we enjoy that part of it as much as, as anyone. But there comes a time when people have to make money at this. I mean, it's expensive to do. It's time consuming. And people are good at it and they're providing value. The platforms are making money. The services we subscribe to, you got to get internet, got to have a streaming service, got to have uh, gear. You've got to have a lot of different things. And uh, of course, the platforms are taking our content and they're monetizing that with ads. They're also selling our data and getting a lot more data on us to sell through what we talk about, what we do when we go live, who shows up where. So. I, there's nothing wrong with live streamers using uh, the platform to monetize, whether that's monetizing your talent as a host or as a producer or a consultant, or perhaps using it to interest people in your in your business. Uh, you know, there's so many different ways people can use live streaming. You write a book, you can talk about the book on live streaming, but you can also use live streaming to create a book. Uh, by creating the content and then come back to the live stream and sell it. So, you know, we got, we're going to go at the event, we're going to go through like 15, 17 speakers. And each one is really mastered a different niche. Each one has an area where they've kind of cracked the code on what it takes to monetize, because this is really new. There's no, there's no book out there that says, this is what you do in 2021. And by the time it's written, it'll be different, right? I mean, the, the thing that I try and, and relate to people, and I think the better books and articles and shows, you teach basically the, the things that don't go out of time, right? That they, they, they never go out. That the basis of interviewing and talking and growing an audience and promoting, that's all the same. But what changes are the platforms, how the audience responds to new features. Do they embrace it? Do they not embrace it? Do they like when you sell products on a certain platform? Do they not want to hear about that? That you have to kind of feel. But the, the, the ability to do a show, I mean, like I was saying before, Jim got a lot of reps in doing a weekly show and then doing other shows being a guest on shows, co-hosting. And so when the opportunity opened up here to 
do a show on a platform where one, there wasn't the number of people doing shows. So you stand out, you guys stand out immediately. But then two, also monetize it with a carousel below and the ability for people to buy products and, and you make money from it. And and so I think because live streaming has been a lifeline for a lot of brick and mortar businesses that would have gone out of business. I mean, there, there are a lot of businesses where the, the business owner never thought about cameras and microphones and any of this stuff, you know, our, cl- our customers come into the store and we talk to them and we show them the product. Well, what happens when there's a lockdown and the customer can't come into the store or is afraid to come into the store? And p- people are are really creative and they came up with all different ways to put entertainment out there and at the same time interest people in, in their products. And that's that's kind of what you got to do with live streaming. It's got to work on a couple of levels, right? It's got to be something that you enjoy watching for watching it. But at the same time, it also has some sort of connection to your business or a way that you're monetizing it because it's not free to do this. (laughs) And if everybody else is making money from it, I think live streamers should should too. And I I think we're a little, little bit behind because we don't have it the built-in system that the platform has for making money that the 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 businesses that have been around and are creating you know uh physical tools or service you know saas products or whatever how do you how do you monetize your creativity how do you monetize your knowledge and it's coming more and more online particularly with online courses and online education and people looking for more affordable ways to get the skills they need on their own time schedule quickly. There's a lot of opportunity out there. And I think it's it's a matter of people breaking through that hesitation, right? Because I know for me, it's like my first thing is always, was it a good show? Not how many units did I sell or did anybody join my email list? Like, did I deliver for my audience? But then we also have to look at business metrics, right? Not how many views, not how many shares, not how many comments, but did we did we get closer to landing a client? Did we get closer to a customer? Did somebody sign up for our email list? Did did somebody set up an appointment for a exploratory call? Did somebody go ahead and buy, you know, whatever it is that you're selling? And 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 all those metrics are going to be the the big ones in the future. Nobody's really going to care whether you had 10 people watching or 10 million. What they're going to care about is, did somebody buy something? Did somebody convert? Or did you raise the awareness to an audience so that then in the future, when they need that product or that service, they know where to go to get it? And that's that's a value in a live stream where you may not sell, but you've raised major awareness of what's out there for people who need it. And you built that relationship with them. So um, I feel a little preachy here, but I just feel like, you know, I I feel like, you know, and and I'm learning myself, right. It's, it's, it's something we all like, I don't, I don't want to be salesy. I don't want to say that. I don't want to write that letter like that. You know, I, I just, everything wants to be pure and art and everything else. But the reality is even an artist has to put food on the table. That's right. And, and live streamers have to get comfortable doing this because you know what? We should have an advantage. This is an extremely powerful e-commerce platform, maybe the most powerful way for those who figure out how to use it. God, yeah. there's so much to unpack there. And I, I want to go back to some some of what you said, Ross, was was so important and what you're what you're talking about here in, in your live summit that's coming up that uh, we're gonna go to. And and just so just so everyone knows, this is coming up on the 15th, right? And it is Absolutely. you can go and it's free and mm-hmm. it's monetized live dot video. You're also going to get a playbook, which I thought was awesome, uh, which we we should we should also do. But it, you know, Ross, I you know, what you were talking about was, you know, and we talked about this with Mitch Jackson when he had, uh, when we had him on the show, who's also speaking at this, uh, this event, when he wrote, um, the guide to social media, that was a number of years ago. 
Of course, social right. media platforms have changed, you know, last since last month. But right. what he put in that book was something that you could use years from now. It was not about like, um, you know, here's what's happening right now on Twitter and here's what's happening right now on whatever right. platform he was talking about. And I think that's what you're talking about here is you've been in, you've been doing live streaming since the webcam was invented. And so, <laughs> you know, a lot of people, a lot of people need to know that a lot of people need to go to live stream universe and just understand that the gentleman on our screen um, has, you know, award, won awards and has done, you know, you're too humble to, to, to say this, I know, Ross, but um, you've seen uh, probably three gazillion microphones being talked about being the best microphone ever. And everybody thinks about the tech and our show's called Don't Fear the Gear because too many people are thinking about hosting platforms and uh, cameras and, and all of these things. And they're forgetting about what you just talked about, which was the content. It's the most important thing. But I started, you talk about not fearing the gear. I started with the built-in camera in my laptop. Um, I was in the dark, no lights, not much anyway. <laughs> I had two doors behind me. You saw the doorknobs, the light switch, lots of distracting stuff. Um, but I kept doing shows and that's, you know, I, I had a time and I went live and I connected with people and did interviews and that's, so it's not the gear, right? As long as your audio is understandable and clear, I, I would say if you do nothing else, get a decent microphone, right. put on some headphones or earbuds, and you're probably most of the way where you need to go. Now, with everybody doing this now and everybody kind of stepping up their, their game a little bit, you might want to get an external webcam. If you've been using an external webcam for a while, there are inexpensive mirrorless cameras that'll take you up a level or, you know, use a past phone. You have a good mm -hmm. iPhone or Samsung phone. Use, use not the one you're currently using because you don't want to have to take it off and put it back up, but use one from a couple of years ago. That's a heck of a camera, better than any webcam you'll get at the store. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and Ross, you know, I think too, right? Because you started in radio, correct? Mm -hmm. And That's so correct. you were you were already kind of used to producing shows, but you, mm -hmm. you know, you weren't in front of a camera yet. And what I think that we're not all have come to the realization of like, and, and every once in a while, Chris and I sit back and are like, wow, we literally have a channel like Dealcasters live channel on Amazon. You can right. tune into our channel. You can watch our past episodes. And, you know, that's where you could say in the old days that the television had that advantage. Well, now not so much, right? People are cutting the cord. People are enjoying and coming watching real people having real conversations and nobody's saying, oh, well, wait a minute, Ross, you can't talk about that because that's not what we've got written down here. <laughs> you can, you know, that's, that's the, I think the excitement to me about this and the fact that, uh, you know, you've gathered all these really uh, amazing people to, to talk to us and all, because, you know, like you said, we're always learning, right? If this is the Absolutely. thing about live streaming, it's, it's, as much as the fundamentals, right? It's the audio, it's the the cameras and the, you know, you know, the better internet you can have, you know, the better you're you don't have to worry about other things. But it's still it's fundamentals, right? And how do you get better at the fundamentals? It's like, you know, at least the three of us will know who John Wooden is, right? But uh <laughs> you know, <laughs> get those reps in. How do you get better at interviewing? How do you get better at presenting things? How do you get better at looking at the camera? takes practice, right? Go back, look at your, the tapes. <laughs> I mean, do, right, we, right. do we even use tapes anymore? And see, what am I doing <laughs> wrong? And what can I do to improve myself? And I think, you know, you've seen it. I mean, you've been, you've been a pioneer in, in, in your own right with this stuff. I mean, you had a great uh, show, you know, StreamYard Connect uh, that, uh, you know, used to enjoy watching and you had some amazing guests on there. I mean, so... uh I think it's exciting, Ross, that you're you know you're continuing to do that by taking this next step with the uh, the monetize uh, live dot video program. Yeah, there's so much room for everybody to grow because when you think about TV, even if, even radio, although radio is a little more much more do it yourself than TV is, but in terms of the gear and things like that, the average on air person isn't like 
oh, I want this microphone. I want my compression turned to here. I want my, you know, put a filter on this. No, I mean, you you go, whatever microphone they have, you sit down and you talk, basically. Now, if you're Rush Limbaugh or somebody like that, then you can have your gold microphone and all. But Howard Stern's got his expensive thing that he moves around. But if you're if you're an average broadcaster or even somebody who's big in in, in a decent sized market, you're not they're, they're not setting things up just for you. They're setting it up for the whole station and what works and for how people listen in their cars. It's and then you get to TV and you've got people handling every aspect of it other than perhaps your writing, perhaps depending on what type of station you work for. You may be doing some of your own shooting, but here we're everything like we're, we're coming up with the concept. We're booking the guest We're we're doing the graphics. We're figuring out how to do the lighting. We've got the background, you know, there'll be somebody in a TV station who just does the green screen and, and chroma key. And they're like, that's their specialty. And somebody else who does, the graphics like just puts the logo where it's supposed to go. And, you know, the text for a specific guest, every single thing you're seeing, that's a part of this. Unless you guys are hiding a team somewhere, you guys are doing it all. (laughs) I'm doing it all. And so of course there's always room to learn and always room to grow. And if you think you've gotten there, you can always get better because nobody is an expert at every one of these things. Right. I mean, even when it comes to gear, I know that I'm, I'm much more comfortable on the audio side than I am on the, on the video side, but I'm getting better. I'm learning. I'm um, certainly, you know, I've upped my game in the last year on the video side, going to a mirrorless camera and a green screen and led lights and, I've still got a ways to go. Still got to look at that camera a little bit more than I do, but it's all a work in progress. And, yeah. and that's it. And, and even at the highest levels of broadcasting, it's often trade-offs. We use this microphone it picks up their voice better, but then it'll also pick up some room noise. If we use this microphone, we won't get any room noise, but their voice doesn't spoil, you know, Everything's a trade-off, right? <laughs> I think it's important because you're. I, I believe you're building a community here too, and and what you're talking about is so important to, you know, because sometimes as a podcaster or live streamer, things you can almost feel lonely. Sometimes you're 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 maybe by yourself. You're firing up a camera. You're doing a show. Is there anybody here? Um, and then you're just kind of waiting for for some feedback. I think it's important to surround yourself with with people that not only can support you, but give you some constructive criticism and you have to build that tough skin and take right. it, take it for what it's worth. Like you're saying, get yourself better, get the reps in, surround yourself uh, with people like that. And also be a lifelong learner on this stuff, you know, uh, go yeah. to monetize live video and, and get a free summit from some of the best speakers on the planet that can talk about this stuff. And why not do that and take the time to do that, to get better um, then you're not worried about um, your content as much, and you're getting that rep, those reps in. So I love, I love what you're building here. Can we talk a little bit about the summit? Can we talk about like, some of the speakers that you got? Because I'm like, we haven't gotten there yet, and this is like a huge laundry list of people that. Um, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you talk about who you'd love to talk about uh, here, Ross. But I mean, this is a, this is a laundry list of of folks that are just massive in the in the live streaming industry. I mean, I, I'd love to talk about all of them. They're all they're <laughs> all amazing. But um, in in the in the sake of time, let sure. me start with um, Winnie Sun is a phenomenal financial <laughs> advisor and prolific live streamer. She goes live, I think almost every day yeah, or every weekday right. with NASDAQ. She's a host for NASDAQ TV and she's also one of the Forbes's top women wealth advisors in the country working with high net worth clients. So she's a perfect person who understands live streaming and understands the monetization side of business and what it takes to build a business and what it takes to build wealth and keep wealth online. So I think for anybody 
kind of transitioning from creative to business, uh, you know, really looking to go from, okay, I, I enjoy doing a show to there's opportunities to make money here online with live streaming. I think you're going to get a lot of the the things that, that are going to help you from, from her talk. Um, another person who I was my very first guest that I ever had on a show is Jennifer Quinn. And she's Jenny somebody Q, else, yeah. Jenny Q, who just dove into it and learned on the fly. She had never done anything like this before. And she was going live every single day doing interviews. And since then, you know, from all that experience, she then went over to Facebook Live when that came along and did the first variety show on Facebook Live. She wrote a book about live streaming, which is still an excellent game plan for anybody who wants to get started. Um, I, I've looked back at it a few times. It's just a wonderful, wonderful book. I read it cover to cover when it first came out. So she's got a impeccable credentials as a live streamer. But on the business side, she's doing consulting for companies that are looking to integrate live streaming into their marketing and their outreach. So there's that aspect of it. Uh, Phil Kluba, who I went live with today, I connected with him through Live U, which is a hardware encoder that you see live streamers sometimes and people in the broadcasting business take with them. Instead of bringing a satellite truck like in the old days, you just take the Live U and you you send it you send it right from your camera and microphone right on back to a station or you send it back to Live U and they boost it out to to social media. You go live right on the spot. Um. But Phil is a phenomenally creative producer and, and and how he works with different companies on the marketing side and also producing the actual broadcast and the creative ways he comes up to use live streaming. It's not always the main event, what he's doing. It's, okay, we're going to have a band release a video. How do we use live streaming to get people to show up for that premiere, get them excited? that they can have some engagement with the band and the the other fans and so forth. So there's, there's, but, but so that's another possibility, right? You've been, you guys have been live streaming for a long time. Jim, I know has moved into producing live streams for other people as I have uh, advising people on how they can use it on behalf of their business. So Phil's a great resource on that. Jenny Q is going to talk about that. Mitch, who you mentioned, is is a perfect example of a business professional who shouldn't be live streaming, right? Now, everybody's a lawyer to <laughs> right, this exactly, nonsense. Exactly. Right? Hey, wait a minute. Uh, look at Mitch Jackson on the phone. <laughs> a lawyer doesn't need to do this. I mean, you got your, <laughs> right. you know, you got to go into court and argue and write your briefs and uh, yeah. What are you doing on 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 video? <laughs> except, except that. He's an entrepreneur at heart. He runs his law firm. He also has other business interests. He's always kind of trying to stay on the forefront of things. And by by diving into the social media live streaming area, he also has become known all around the world. And people say, hmm, I need a, a lawyer in California. And Mitch Jackson knows, or I need somebody to talk about some social media issue that I don't know anything about and neither do any of these other. Oh, Mitch knows. Right. And he's got a group. If he doesn't have time for me, he's got a, an entire group of people who are lawyers and learning about social media issues and using social media to market and, and, and promote their law firm. So that's another way. Um, John Ferreira is going to speak. He founded uh, he he like pioneered the CRM, the, the the customer relationship management software, and he started with like five thousand dollars, I think it was, and without taking VC money, without spending a lot on marketing, he grew that business to uh, I think a hundred million or nearly a hundred million in revenue in, in a fairly short time, and sold it, and now he's back running a, a company called Nimble. And, and that's something that integrates for the, you know, uh, CRM started out being for big companies more than they were for 
Now he's got a solution that the average person can take advantage of that integrates with your social media and your Gmail or your uh, Microsoft 365. So he can talk about how he used social selling and influencer marketing, all these different areas that live streamers are primed to be able to you know, either be the influencer marketer or use these social connections and the influence of others to spread the word about your business. I mean, so many talented people, um, Louise McDonald, I'll just mention another thing people don't think of a lot of times, fundraising through live streaming. She raised $35,000 in one live stream. Wow. So there's potential there for that in yeah. that area. Um, and if you want to throw out a name or somebody, I'm happy to hit, I don't, I don't have the, the graphic in front of me, but I'm happy to talk about what they're going to talk about or you, right. you have a subject. No, of I, course, yeah, of course, you screen, you screen just joined us as as a sponsor. I'm, I'm super proud because they are they, their business model. Their mission is video monetization, helping creators monetize their videos and sell videos. And PJ, who's the founder and CEO, is going to talk about how people. His customers, who he's seen do it, are selling courses and creating membership groups in order to monetize live streaming and monetize video on demand, and also the role of live streaming can play in lead generation. So that's another phenomenal wow. speaker who I can't wait to hear from. Uh, somebody else who's got a book that just came out recently is Jan Koch. He's from Germany, and he wrote a, he wrote the book on on virtual summits. In fact, I read his book as I was, I should have read it before I started planning this, but I read it along the way. And then <laughs> he's also got a course on a program on it. And he's a, a his, his program is a sponsor of, uh, uh, of the summit, but I've learned a tremendous amount from him and virtual summits. I mean, everything's going virtual now. It's, it's an also another opportunity to, to perhaps monetize or, it's a it's a link in that chain that you know you get known you get emails you make connections you meet influential folks and then maybe you have a different strategy to monetize at the end but it's it's definitely something that moves people along and it's why as much as I can I always say yes when somebody asks me to speak at a at a virtual summit because it's just a great way to get your name out there and to Explore new ideas that you might use on, on your live streams, you might use in other talks. And sometimes, like you mentioned PodFest, which is just one of my favorite events of the year, probably my favorite, you know, to, to speak at. It was just like such an honor to speak at that event. And you talk about an event that like, yeah, it's amazing in person, but it's it's pretty darn amazing online, too. <laughs> Yeah. I, I mean, you talk about somebody who's Chris Kermitzos has pulled together so many of the elements of the in-person event using tools and apps and community things that things like the Whova app, which is probably a very premium solution, but then using Zoom and live streaming and and and, you know, meetups and all different mm -hmm. ways, you know, letting people take take control and set up their own sessions, their own meetups. And, and so there's a lot that goes on with that community. And I think it's a great place to look as well for, for, for ideas. Yeah. You touched on, uh, you know, the, the, just a wide variance of, of people. And it's just, there's so much to unpack there, which is, which is great, you know, that it's, that it's free. And certainly I'm, you know, hopefully there's a, there's an option to, to get those recordings, be able to, to utilize that as well. So you know, you spoke a little bit about Mitch and what uh, what he's done with live streaming, you know, and who would have thought that there would be such a thing as a live streaming lawyer, right? <laughs> right Earlier right. this week, I, I was doing I was on a show and we were interviewing um, an insurance salesman who has branded himself with live streaming, mostly on LinkedIn. Um, and as you know, basically does hip hop um, and, you know, was a was an MC <laughs> and um, he has taken his personal brand and applied it to live streaming. And, and, and I think in the same way, I think a lot of people sort of say, I sell insurance. And so I'm in this box. Right, I'm a right, lawyer. Right. I'm in this box. But they treat it 
Mitch and uh, Daryl, who we, we spoke earlier uh, this week, uh, the bow tie guy, the notorious BTG, right, right. Um, <laughs> they treat it as as like they're an influencer. I am an influencer insurance salesman. I am an influencer lawyer. They're treating this. They're they're saying I you know I may work for a firm or I may work for Aflac or I may work for whomever, but I'm taking my personal brand and I'm going to brand myself along with what I do for a living. And I think this opportunity for what you're building um, does just that because it'll get it, you know, while you're talking about all these people, it's generating ideas for a, a lot of people that are like, well, geez, I didn't know I could do that. I'm this. Well, yeah, right, you can do that. Right. You can just fire up your camera and do what, uh, you know, a lot of people are doing already. Yeah. I mean, there, everybody's kind of come from a different background in this. Mm -hmm. um, you have somebody like Michael Kinney who's speaking, who has 30 years in, in broadcast television. He's been an actor. He's been a documentary filmmaker. I think if there's a role in video and television and film, Michael's had it at some point. So there's, there's, you, you see the talent just pours out, right? I mean, there's no question that he was meant to do online video just as he's he's been you know amazing and doing linear television and and film uh, but you have somebody like coach jenny who like the name she's a coach uh and she built her coaching business to a whole different level uh she was seeing one-on-one -on -one clients and whatever and all of a sudden she started live streaming and talking about you know and and showcasing how she works with clients doing some hot seat type of broadcast, doing some in a private Facebook group, maybe, or in a back then blab, you could turn off the recording and do it, you know, sort of like clubhouse, except uh, who knows what anybody's doing there. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> the thing with uh, the thing is like, and, and her business took off because now people all over the world, not just word of mouth, but people can tune in and see how she relates to people, what a thought leader she is in her area. And, you know, she's grown to where she's then added coaching programs and events and, and now does group coaching and membership and, you know, so that she can serve many more people and her business ha has grown. And then you have a guy like Dale Roberts, who's all over social media. He's, he's a live streamer. He's a podcaster. He's a YouTube star, I, I would say. Um, and and he picked the area of self-publishing and has gone all in. He first was doing fitness books, and now he's become an expert in in Amazon and self-publishing on Amazon and self-publishing uh and and author branding and all these different areas. So I, I think we all we all are a lot more complicated and come from a lot more different areas than we think. And a lot of the skills translate much more than we're giving credit for. Now, I, I probably couldn't, you know, go do surgery tomorrow or something like that. <laughs> well, if you but, sedated a Holiday Inn Express. Yeah, right. Yes, that that is true. And um, well, you know, I, there's a funny story about that, but I'll, I'll let the other uh, our mutual contact tell that story if you hadn't <laughs> heard it. But there actually is a story about somebody Jim and I know who stayed at a Holiday Inn Express and then was actually called into uh, <laughs> playing a role that a doctor might play and everything turned out pretty good. So <laughs> but well, I, I don't know that I should tell that story. So we'll, we'll, Jim and I will talk off the air. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's, uh, I guess, live stream universe is where um, people will go. Uh, is that That's one place I would say join the Facebook group right now. That's, I mean, it's my first Facebook group. And, uh, you know, that's where we're spending time uh, talking about the event. And then the conversation will continue after the event. But just all things live streaming and monetization, it's um, called mon monetize live streaming now. So it's a mouthful for me. So I've been using face facebook.com slash groups slash monetize live. So at monetize live or monetize live is probably the easiest way to find it. And if not, just send me a message anywhere on social or email me or whatever. I all right. I've got, I've got one last easy question for Ross. Okay. Brand. Live right. stream one word or two. 
Wow. So I started with it as one word. I'll tell you why. Startup, right? Was start and up. Then it became start dash up and finally just became a startup as one word. So I figured live streaming would go that way. And so I started doing it as one word. A lot of people did it as two words. And I did that for a few years. And then it dawned on me that it kind of looks better in a headline, on a graphic, when you split it up. It's just easier to digest. So I did that for a long time, but I didn't want to have four words in the title of this event. It's already kind of long, monetized live streaming now. So I went with the three words. So now I'm back to using live streaming mostly as one word, but I will still throw it in as two words because... <laughs> <laughs> there's that Google thing and, I, you know, that YouTube oh, yeah. algorithm and all that. And I think using it as two words is a little more search friendly, but that mm. I would have to consult with an SEO expert on that. <laughs> so um, I, I and I, I think a lot of publications are using it as one word, like a lot of news organizations are doing as one word. But you see two words a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, I even got to the point where, and my, and uh, you know, it's called live stream universe, two words, right? I even started writing live stream, not the company, but at the, when I would say I'm, you know, I'm going to live stream later or something. I even started writing that as two words at one point and that I thought I'd never do, but <laughs> so I'm back in the camp of one, at least oh, okay. for a little while. Right. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, well, I think it's um, one is a hashtag, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the hashtags always got no got choice, one. right? Yeah. yeah, and so yeah, the <laughs> chat uh, is uh, like team one word. So um, excellent. excellent. I think I, I think we're going with one word. We've decided it here. Um, <laughs> this is the moment where yeah. live stream becomes one word. Um, but yeah, uh, I moved off. I moved off of it for a while, but I'm back in the one word camp, and you know, I'm with my peeps here, so this is all good. <laughs> so, so, Ross, fi final question for me, um, sure, because you you're definitely, like I said, you you've been been doing this for for quite a while. What do you see as the future of live streaming? Do you do you like the direction it's going? What what are some things you think you could see maybe coming up in say the next year that people should be uh, considering and thinking about? Uh, I think what you guys are doing and where you're doing it is where the future is going. It may not be Amazon Live, but it's certainly the merger of e-commerce and live streaming. And Amazon, you've got that cart there, that uh, carousel, right? You can click on the item while you're watching the live stream. It goes right into your cart. You buy. I think that's coming in some capacity to every platform. And those that don't have it are going to start to fall behind. It's going to be expected. I think it's, you know, it's like super chat on steroids, right? Mm -hmm. Now you, you're you not just tipping, although I think there'll be plenty of opportunities for that. Or you're not just buying a small membership. You are buying all different types of products. Everything from 99 cents to $999 and 9,000, whatever, like, I think that's where it's going. Like shopping is, okay, I want to learn about the product, not not going to the store, waiting for a salesperson, asking questions. They ask you questions. They assume they know what you want to know and you, you go through that dance. I think it's going to be like, I'm interested in shopping at DealCasters. Uh, <laughs> when are, when are, are Jim and Chris going live? Uh, they'll probably talk about that new product that came in or whatever, and I'll just mm -hmm. watch them and see if it sounds like something that would work for me or not. I, I think yeah. we're going that way. It'll always be like you'll lead with entertainment, you'll lead with conversation. But I, I shouldn't say always. I'm saying that'll always be a part of what live streaming is, right? It'll always be conversations and content. And, and selling is content too. But I think it's going to get to the point where um, you'll just tune in because somebody will just be like, this is the new gear and it won't be like I'm doing an unboxing and you watch it and it's entertaining as I flub through and I try and figure out what this piece <laughs> is and how, you know, yeah. but it'll be more like, you know, I just tried this. It's amazing. Not just a review where you then go to the store and buy it or you buy it with my affiliate link, but like you fall in love with the product right away. Like 
I, I'm sure you guys have done this too. Like somebody describes some service or something like, oh, this will send your emails from the moon to <laughs> Mars or whatever. And then get set. And you're like, that sounds kind of good. Let me sign up for that. You know, and, and so it's the same thing with live streaming, but I, I think it'll be everything from everyday products to even premium high ticket items. But we'll see. We'll have to see how that how that develops. Well, I know. Uh, usually I'm the one asking for predictions. Yeah, but yeah, that's <laughs> right. true. And I, I did get I was I was honored to be on your prediction show last year. But I will say, you know, definitely for those of you uh, that have unmuted, you need to follow this man everywhere he's at because he is definitely in the know. He he gets out ahead of things. I, I know I continue to to learn from you, Ross. Appreciate your your friendship. Appreciate you uh, yeah. joining us and uh, excited for what you're doing with uh, Monetize Live Video. Well, thanks a lot, guys. This was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed it. And uh, look well, forward to to doing more shows together. And and yeah. this is just a blast. So thank you for having me. Thank Absolutely. You. Thanks, Ross. And for those of you who are who just joined us, I see a bunch. I see Christina Nietzsche's in the in Barb, who's also an Amazon Live influencer, has joined as well as Ryan Utechbia. Thanks everyone for for joining us. If you guys have not gotten your free ticket and the upcoming playbook, brand new playbook being adjusted right now by Ross Brand to be delivered into your inbox, go to monetize live dot video. That thing is going to be May 15th, chock full of amazing speakers on all types of fronts to be able to monetize your live stream. Uh, Thanks as always. Thanks, uh, uh, my partner, Jim uh, in crime uh, for a great show. And Ross Brand, thank you once again for the reason why we're here. We appreciate it. And as always, don't fear the gear. Thanks for listening to Dealcasters. Congratulations. You've taken another step forward in your content creation journey. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe or follow button here in your favorite podcast player so you can be reminded every time we drop an episode. We love hearing from our listeners and viewers. And if you're wanting to watch our shows live on Amazon, feel free to follow Dealcasters Live as well at dealcasters.live. Follow us on Twitter or subscribe to our YouTube channel where we also included added content that you cannot find anywhere else. If you have questions about this episode or have something you want us to review, you can also email us at dealcasters at dealcasters.live. Thanks again for listening. And you know the deal. Don't fear the gears.